What is up guys, Lux here from the MD Journey where my job is to help you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. This video is going to be a Q&A about some of the most common questions that I get uh, while applying for a residency. And at the very end, I'm going to have a giveaway, so please stay tuned uh, for that. But no more time to waste, let's get to the video. All right guys, so let's get to the Q&A uh, portion of the video. As always, at the very end of the videos, I always ask you guys to comment down below with any questions. So I definitely keep track of those. A lot of you guys definitely uh, email me uh, specific questions you have. So I've kind of jotted them out and I'll answer some of the common ones that I get. Um, so the first one is, how did I know that I was going into internal medicine as a specialty? And a uh, quick answer to that. So internal medicine, for any of you guys who don't know, is uh, taking care of people in the hospital, uh, typically taking care of adult patients, so people above the age of 18, age above 21, and you're, this is the field where you kind of think about your adult cardiologist, your adult pulmonologist, um, you know, your GI docs, as well as some basic um, PCPs are also internal medicine. So it's a broad um, field and you can do a lot. You can be a general internist, which means you uh, deal with a lot of basic um, complaints that people come in uh, at the hospital for, but you can also become like a cardiologist, which requires further training. But a residency in internal medicine kind of trains you to at least be a good general internist. And then if you want to specialize in a field like cardiology, like nephrology, um, pulmonology, um, you know, infectious disease, then you can do further training after your residency. So long answer or short answer to uh, what could be a potentially long story about why I picked internal medicine is like a lot of answers you'll get about why people specific picked a specific field is you kind of always know uh, either before you start the rotation or after you do rotation you find that one the people that are in that rotation or in that field that specialty are kind of your people it, that type of personality definitely jives with you so I'm definitely somebody that is naturally curious, enjoys creating long-term relationships with my patients, um, having conversations, seeing my patients every day, preferring my patients awake, which is why surgery was completely out of uh, my uh, potential specialties in the future. And then I definitely enjoyed being on the front line of medicine where the patient comes in, don't really know what's going on, you may have an idea, you get to work things up, treat them, make them better, then send them home. Um, so internal medicine is close enough to the front, uh, frontline parts of medicine, but you also get to make a lot of long-term relationships uh, after you treat your patients. So that's kind of a, the short answer to a potentially long story of why I picked internal medicine. It definitely fed my curiosity. Um, I chose um, the field because it gives me the most opportunities, in my opinion, to build long-term relationships, the, the, at least the ones that I want to form. And so that's why I picked the field. The second question is, can you go over the residency uh, application timeline? Like what does applying a residency look like? Are you still in medical school? Are you still doing rotations? So yes, you are usually doing rotations. The way it works is kind of similar to applying to uh, med school, but your application starts a little bit later. So most applications are submitted in the mid portions of September. Um, they're kind of usually finalized in the early parts of October when your final letters of recommendations are sent and then your interviews for that specialty uh, that you're applying to kind of varies depending on what you do but usually you start getting interviews anywhere from late October to mid-November and they kind of go on until usually December, January depending on the field. Uh, so you do interviews just like you did for medical school but now this is kind of considered your first real job opportunity or your job interview um, and the coolest part and the most stressful part about applying to residencies after you do a re all your interviews after you're done with your application cycle in the spring before March you create a list of all the schools you interviewed at and you rank them you know if you interviewed at 10 different places you rank them 1 to 10 the schools that interviewed uh, you as well as the rest of the applicants will rank everyone that they interviewed on a scale, you know, from one to, if they interviewed 200 people, from one to 200. A computer system is going to match you on your highest preference where the school also ranks you really highly. So you may rank the school number one 
and they have 50 spots and they ranked 50 other people ahead of you or more than 50 people ahead of you. That means you're not going to that school for your residency program, but you on your second preference, um, you rank the school number two and they have 30 spots for their particular residency program and they rank you in their top 10. That means you are going there, you match that residency program. In the month of March, there's a specific day, a Friday, at a specific time where everybody in the country will open up a letter that tells them where they went or where they're about to go to residency. So that is called the match process. It's one of the most exciting, exhilarating, as well as stressful and anxious uh, experiences that we will have in medicine. I haven't had mine yet, but I can already tell you that such an experience is going to be all those emotions combined, but I'm still very excited. So that is kind of the residency uh, timeline. Um, so right now I'm about to submit my application within the next couple weeks, and then I will start my interview cycle within the next two to three months. So I will keep you guys on that journey as, uh, as it happens. Question number three, how many interviews or how many places will I like to apply to? Um, this varies depending on who you are, your, your situation, kind of your competitiveness as an applicant as well as what field you're applying to. So somebody in uh, a primary care field may apply to, you know, less places than somebody that's come trying to become an orthopedic surgeon or a vascular surgeon or radiation oncologist. A lot of those fields have less spots. And so you're gonna to require to have more um, applicants or applications filled out. Um, someone like internal medicine, you may apply to 20 to 30 programs. If you are, are you know, a good applicant and you uh, feel good about the programs that you wanna to apply to, then you may be okay with applying to 20 to 30. Um, but if you have a specific geographic restraint if you know you struggled on some of your uh, licensing exams that are really important, you know you may have to apply to um, 30 to 40 or so on. But you have advisors um, during your medical school experience that kind of show you what that number is for you because everyone's situation is different. So I can't give a clear answer because um, my number doesn't really mean anything to you um, just because our applications, our, our profiles are gonna look totally different. But that gives you an idea. So the more competitive you are, Plus places you may have to apply to, but then again, if you're applying to a more competitive specialty, that number may still be pretty high. So keep that in mind. And I will do, let's do one more question. So how many years does a uh, residency last? Uh, and again, this varies with the specialty that you choose, but if you choose a field that's in primary care, so internal medicine, pediatrics, family medicine, and emergency medicine, those will be three years. Emergency medicine has some programs it does four, um, but those will be three years after medical school. So you spend four years in college, take your degree, four years in medical school, and then three years in those primary care fields um, to become uh, a practicing physician, an attending physician. Uh, you'll be licensed to practice on your own. Residency is kind of supervised, uh, acting like a doctor. You are a doctor, you are an MD, your DO, wherever school you came from, um, but you're supervised by somebody that has uh, a license to practice by themselves. Um, so three years for primary care, and then certain fields uh, that are more procedural based, so like surgery, uh, will be anywhere from five to seven years. So uh, a field like radiation oncology is five years, a field like orthopedic surgeon is like six to seven years. So it definitely varies. Um, neurosurgery is like seven years. So it varies on how procedural um, your uh, specialty that you're going into. And then you may be able to do further training after that. For example, if you want to go into internal medicine and you realize you want to become an oncologist, uh, then you can do three years in your internal medicine residency, learn everything there is to learn about adult medicine and practice that for three years. And then realize that I like really, I like working with cancer patients. So then you can, um, spend three more years in what you call a fellowship. That's after residency. And so that just gives you a timeline that you can still spend a lot of years even in the primary care field if you choose to specialize after doing your primary care residency. So hopefully that gives you guys some idea on some of the common questions that I often get on my residency applications, my residency cycle. But if you guys have more, comment below and I will answer them in another video. Now part of the giveaway. So um, I, in my email list, for any of you guys that join, I will always give out monthly 
uh, free copies of the books I've written. So I have two books currently. Uh, one is about a book to succeed in your first two years of medical school, and then another book is on how to study. These are ebooks that are on my website. And every month, depending on um, who emails me and the conversations that we have, I give out a few um, free copies to my subscribers. And so I want to throw that out to also my YouTube subscribers. So if you go ahead and one like this video, and then in the comment section, just uh, put hashtag my MD journey. So my MD journey, and I will choose two random winners and I will go ahead and send you a message on YouTube and you can choose, uh, actually not even choose, I'm gonna just give you both books for free, um, no questions asked. Um, I just want to thank you guys that are a part of this community uh, for supporting me and I can do that uh, by doing a little bit of free giveaways here and there. More uh, giveaways to come, but again, if you wanna be part of this giveaway, which is getting both of my books for free, um, just do hashtag uh, MyMDJourney on the comment section below. Really appreciate it. But if you have more questions for my next Q&A, that's when we'll probably do my next giveaway. And I already have an idea what I want to do. Um, then comment below and that'll also be an entry itself. You either uh, ask a question um, that you're interested in me answering in a future video or just doing uh, my MD journey uh, hashtag. Uh, that will be enough representation of your love. Uh, but like this video, comment below with any questions you have. And I will see you guys in the next video, my friends. Take care.